In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the fair value method to account for an equity investment. So first of all, if your company buys stock in another company and your ownership stake in that company is less than 20%, that's when you're going to use the fair value method. And what that means is that the investment, that firm, that stake that you bought in another firm is going to be marked to market on your firm's balance sheet. Okay, so that investment is going to be marked to market. When we say marked to market, what we mean is it's going to be recorded at fair value. So if the fair value of that investment goes up, then you're going to market to market. You're going to increase the value of your asset. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that. But just one final point is any of that unrealized gain or loss that occurs, that's going to go through net income. So that's going to affect your income statement, increase your net income if it's a gain, decrease your net income if it's a loss. Okay. So that's basically the fair value method. Now, theoretically also, so we're talking about firms where you own less than 20% stake. However, if you own 20 to 50%, there's this thing called the equity method, which we'll talk about, but you can make an election to use the fair value method, right? So it's not always this is firms is less than 20%, but this is the general rule. But let me show you an example to kind of show you how the fair value method would play out in, in practice. So let's say that your company buys, let's say 4,000 shares of another company called Flying Cars Incorporated, and your company pays $50 a share for those 4,000 shares. And now, Flying Cars Incorporated, they have 100,000 shares outstanding total. So you own 4%. You have a 4% stake in the firm. So because you own because you own less than 20% of Flying Cars Incorporated, you're automatically going to use this fair value method. So let me show you the journal entries for how it would work. So when you buy your investment, or, or when you buy Flying Cars, when you purchase this investment, you're going to debit the investment account for $200,000 because that's what you paid, right? We just take the 4,000 and multiply it by 50. That gives you $200,000, okay? Now, let's just assume you paid cash, so we credit cash for $200,000. But let's pretend that the very next day, the share price jumps up to $63 a share, right? So you made a good investment here because now we see that it was originally at 50, but now it's at 63, so you've had a gain per share of $13, right? And you own 4,000 shares, so if we multiply 4,000 times 13, we get 52,000. So you're $52,000 wealthier. You don't actually have the cash yet, right? You haven't sold the investment, but we can tell that you've had a gain. And so we're gonna credit unrealized gain on investment Right? And that's, I just put a little NI there so you know it goes to net income. We're going to credit that for 52000 Now, it seems weird. You would think you would just debit investment flying cars for 52000 but you don't. You debit this thing called fair value adjustment. I see I've made a little mistake. It's fair value adjustment. So that's what you debit. Now, on the balance sheet, so let's say we've got our balance sheet here. We're going to have this investment. We're going to have that 200000 and then if we let's just pretend that right now at the end of this day that we put together our balance sheet right because remember it's a snapshot of a point in time then we would add in the 52,000 fair value adjustment and so it'd be 252 i know it's weird it'd just be easier to just debit the investment account but that's not how it works we add this and this together and so effectively we have marked this to market and so it would be on the balance sheet at $252,000. So it's at its fair value. So that's all we're doing, right? It, the alternative, which we don't have an option to do, would be cost. We just leave it at $200,000 and say, but that's not what we do. The fair value method says, hey, we're wealthier. It's, it's gone up, right? The, right? the share price has gone up. So we're going to market to market on the balance sheet. And then we're going to have this unrealized gain of $52,000 will go to net income. So if we were putting together our, net, uh, our income statement at the end of the day today, this $52,000 gain would be included in net income. Now, all that being said, let me just show you what would happen if you decided to sell the security. So I'll just show you the disposal. So let's say that the very next day, so this is like, okay, we bought the shares, then the next day the share price went up, and now uh, the share price goes down to $57 a share the next day, and you sell all 4,000 shares. So this is a continuation. So like, this was the first thing that happened. We bought it, and then the share price went up the next day, and then now here we are the day after that. So I'm not ignoring this. This still happened. I'm just saying that now the next day the stock price dropped, okay? 
So now what are we going to do? Well, we know here's we know that we're going to have cash. We're going to debit cash for 228,000. Where did I get that number? So that is the 4,000 shares. That's how many shares we own. We multiply that by $57 a share because the share price went down, right? So we got cash of 228,000. Now, because we've sold the security, we have to get rid of the unrealized gain and the fair value adjustment. Okay, and those we had the credited the unrealized gain for 52 grand. Now we debit the unrealized gain for 52,000 just to zero it out, right? So we get rid of that and then we credit our fair value adjustment to zero that account out, at least as far as it pertains to this investment. I'm assuming we don't have other investments with unrealized gains and so forth, it'd be a little more complex. Now we also need to make a credit to our investment of $200,000. Where did that come from, you might be saying? Well, remember, when we originally got the investment, we debited it for $200,000, okay? So now we credit the investment for $200,000 and we've zeroed that account out. So now the plug to make this balance is $228,000, right? Now, if you aren't comfortable thinking about it as a plug, and by plug, I mean like if we didn't have this here, we'd be like, oh, this side doesn't balance with this side. We need to make an entry. Okay, so that's kind of the easy accounting way to do it. But if you want to think like, well, what is this? How, why do we have this realized game? What's going on here? Think about it like this. We got $228,000 for this stock. We originally bought it for $200,000. Okay, so we have a $28,000 realized gain. And again, the difference between unrealized and realized is that the unrealized happened, we hadn't sold the stock yet, but now we've sold it. And so that's all we mean when we say that there's a realized gain. And so this realized gain is going to go to net income. This is gonna affect the income state. And at the end of the year, so assume this is all, all of this stuff is happening for one year. Actually, the net effect on the income statement would be that it would be $28,000 higher well, net income.